In this video, we're computing a quadratic Taylor polynomial located at a local minimum of a function. And here's our function. And this is actually a really common application of Taylor polynomials. It has a lot of application in physics to locate the minimum of a potential energy function and then approximate it with a quadratic function. In other words, an upright parabola that's going to match the curvature of this function right at that local minimum. And the function we're looking at here is actually a simplified version of what's called the Leonard Jones potential. The Leonard Jones potential would have an arbitrary A and B in these numerators, and I changed them to ones just to clean things up and make this process go a little more efficiently. So in part A, we're asked to compute U prime of R and then find R for the local minimum. And then in part B, we're going to be asked to find that Taylor polynomial that matches the curvature there at the local minimum. So let's get U prime real quick. And that first term is r to the negative 12th, and using the power rule, that gives me negative 12 r to the negative 13th, which I'm going to write as a fraction, negative 12 over r to the 13. The second term is similar, it's r to the negative 6. I bring down the negative 6, making this term positive, and subtract 1 from the exponent, leaving me with an r to the negative 7, or 1 over r to the 7th. So there's u prime of r. To find the local minimum, we're going to set that equal to 0. The derivative of a function is equal to zero at its local minimum point. And I'm going to multiply both sides by r to the 13 here, and I get negative 12 plus 6r to the 6, just canceling seven factors of r in that term, is equal to zero. Now we can add 12 to both sides, divide by 6, and take the sixth root of both sides, and we find what I'm going to call r0 for our local minimum point is the sixth root of 2. Okay, so that part of the problem is done, and we're a little bit short on space for the Taylor polynomial part. So I'm going to go ahead and compute the second derivative of u up in this first space, because I know I'm going to need that for my quadratic Taylor polynomial. So u prime starts with a negative 12 r to the negative 13, so I bring down the negative 13, making the result positive, and 12 times 13 is 156, and I subtract 1 from the exponent, giving me a negative 14, so 1 over r to the 14. Similar for the second term, that's 6r to the negative 7. Bring down the negative 7, giving you a negative 42. Subtract 1 from the exponent, giving you r to the negative 8th, or 1 over r to the 8th. And there's u double prime of r in general. So just a quick reminder of how a quadratic Taylor approximation would work. We're saying that our function u of r is well approximated by a polynomial, and the constant term would be u of r naught where r0 is that point that we're expanding around, the local minimum in this case. And then I would have a term that's u prime of r0 times r minus r0. That's the linear term. And the last one we're keeping is the quadratic term u double prime of r0. That's divided by 2 factorial, or just 2, times r minus r0 squared. And we already know that our linear term dies here. We know that u prime of r0 is equal to 0. We just figured that out when we found the location of that local minimum. But we still need to compute u of r0 and u double prime of r0, and then we can write down this Taylor polynomial. So hopefully I don't run into my own logo. We'll try to squeeze it in right here. u of r0 is 1 over r0 to the 12th. And I'm going to write r0 as a fractional exponent because it's a little easier to deal with. So I'm going to write it as 2 to the 1 6 to the 12th minus 1 over r0 to the 6th, so 2 to the 1 6 to the 6th. And when I multiply these exponents, I get 1 over 2 squared for the first term, so that's 1 over 4. For the second term, I get 2 to the 1 in the denominator, so a minus 1 half there, and I end up with negative 1 fourth for my constant term, and all this left is the quadratic term. So we plug in to find u double prime of r0, where r0 is 2 to the 1 6th, and that gives me a 156 over 2 to the 1 6th to the 14th, minus 42 over 2 to the 1 sixth to the eighth. And multiplying the exponents in these denominators, I get a 156 over 2 to the 14 over 6, which is 2 to the 7 thirds, minus 42 over 2 to the 8 over 6, or 2 to the 4 thirds. And we can get a common denominator here by multiplying the second fraction by 2 to the 3 thirds divided by 2 to the 3 thirds, in other words, 2 over 2. I'm going to call it a 2 in the numerator and a 2 to the 3 thirds in the denominator. That gives me a common denominator of 2 to the 7 thirds. So I can combine these fractions now. The numerator of the second one is 84. So I get 156 minus 84 in the numerator, giving me a 72 
over 2 to the 7 thirds. And 2 to the 7 thirds is 2 to the 6 thirds times 2 to the 1 third. In other words, 2 squared, or 4, times 2 to the 1 third. So I have 72 over 4 times the cubed root of 2. That's 2 to the 1 third. Now I can divide the 4 out of the 72. And that leaves me with 18 over the cubed root of 2 for the value of u double prime evaluated at this local minimum. So when I plug in to get my Taylor polynomial, uh, u of r naught was negative 1 fourth. And then my quadratic term is u double prime of r naught divided by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as 9 over the cube root of 2 times r minus r naught, which is the 6th root of 2 squared. So that's our quadratic Taylor approximation centered at the local minimum of this function. And when we plot this thing, it should be very well matched to the graph of u of r, provided we're close to this special value of r, the sixth root of 2. So let's bring in a graph real quick of this quadratic approximation. So in the graph, this sort of teal color is the quadratic Taylor approximation. And it's supposed to be valid when we're close to this local minimum. And I just drew a little bracket to indicate sort of the range of values where this is a very good approximation to the curvature of the original function. After that, it's going to diverge from our original function u of r. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.